Oh, hi, welcome back. Did that look incredibly fake? Because I jumped off my couch to in front of the camera. We're getting pretty creative here, aren't we, guys? Welcome back to the channel, Mandy Energy, with none other than me, Mandy. What would this channel be without its namesake. Welcome back to my channel. I am Mandy and this is my Eurobeat topic, thematic discussion reaction. Thanks for taking a few moments today to click on this video and spend however long the duration of this video is with me. I hope that by the end of this video you are entertained, intrigued, enlightened, something in that categorization. If you enjoy the video by the end, I hope you will give this video a thumbs up. It helps with the analytics. There's a subscription button down here. You can subscribe and watch more of this beautiful quality content that is my channel. And when all is said and done, write a comment down below. We'll get to what you write, need to write that comment about later. But for now, we're moving on. You saw the title of this video. You saw the thumbnail. You know what's going down. We have another filler. AKA, it's called a story time. It's a story time video. I should have a very clear disclaimer here. Typically, my videos have some sort of outline or some sort of thematic flow to them. This one doesn't. This is just literally me standing in front of the camera and talking at it. So there is nothing outlined here. You just get to see me talk about myself. What a homegrown narcissist. If you're into Eurobeat, I'm sure you have your own little diddy, your own little story, if you will. Some people get into it because of Initial D, because of the Initial D soundtrack, or Initial D arcade stage soundtrack. Some people got into it in the 90s or in the early 2000s because of Para Para, and the Para Para video games that used to be available in Japan, and in some, a handful of arcades in North America and Europe. Some people even get into Eurobeat because of racing, or drift racing. Now in more recent years, and recent years I use the terms surrounding the deja vu and gas 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 memes, people got into Eurobeat or got introduced to Eurobeat because of meme culture on the internet. The finest culture there is. It is refined and broken down to a very beautiful medium. An unappreciated art form, if you will. Yeah, but see, see my origin in the genre, a lot, a lot less of all of that. So I'm going to take you back, a back, a long time, to approximately 2001. So this is going to be my story of how I got into the Eurobeat genre, because I see a lot of people talking about how they get pulled into it, and I've actually had, in the last two weeks, probably two dozen people ask me why I got into Eurobeat or how long I've been listening to Eurobeat. So I figure this video is on point and it's about Eurobeat. I don't remember the exact dates of anything. So all of these are approximates and this is probably just going to get hazier as I get older. Back in approximately 2001, being the nerdy anime obsessed child I was, downloaded a lot of anime music. I'm sure we're all familiar, I'm sure many of us are familiar with that theme. I downloaded a song called Nights of Fire, not Night of Fire, Nights of Fire, and not night like sleep, night like warrior, fighter. Now the kicker to this is that you'd think it would have been under the initial D name. It wasn't! Mandy, what are you talking about? Yeah, so uh, it was under some obscure random anime title. Yeah, I, I don't recall the name. It was actually under as for an anime labeling, but it was not Initial D. It was something more fantasy oriented. And I listened to the song, Nights of Fire, and I thought it was good. Like I liked it. It definitely fit into my anime music taste at the time, and I was quite content with it. Little did I know there was so much more. So for 
the next two years, I proceeded to continue obtaining anime music. I bought what I could, as I could. Options were very limited! Until approximately 2008, I'd argue. So, you know what? You do what you can, right? Over those two years, I wound up discovering more about Initial D, Initial D music, as people call it. I only listened to a couple of songs here and there. I wasn't really pulled into it because at that time I was obsessed with other artists. Couldn't listen to every single thing and so certain shows with soundtracks took priority, certain recommendations, certain purchases took priority. This lack of priority to the initial D music genre would would fall into place in approximately 2004. So this back burner of initial D music that I was kind of having take place, that all fell apart when I was in eighth grade. What does that mean? One, let's say going into summer night, one of my cousins was over doing something at our house, I don't even remember what, and my family went, oh hey, Let's go to Dairy Queen and get some ice cream because that's what you do, folks. Me and my cousin proceeded to get in his old Corolla and drove to the local Dairy Queen. Meanwhile, he had burnt CDs because this is in the time when CDs were being used in cars. It's not that long ago, guys. We were listening to his initial D music CD he burnt for his car. I can't remember what the first I think first song on the CD was. I do not recall. However, the second song on the CD really rang a bell because I heard Bach and I was very confused. You have no idea how much classical music I am familiar with. So I proceeded to turn to my cousin in the driver's seat and say, hey, what is this? And he goes, oh, it's initial D music. It's something called Eurobeat. I took a moment, I was thinking, I was thinking both about this and about the order I was going to place at Dairy Queen, let's not lie here, the ice cream was kind of a taking precedence in this situation. So at this point, you can probably piece together the song that I was hearing, which was Back on the Rocks by Mega Energy Man. Once the vocals kicked in a few moments later, I was very intrigued. It was not that I instantaneously fell in love with the genre. It's that I was instantaneously overwhelmed with intrigue with the genre. I've always been, from the point I was a kid, I was listening to disco music. You can judge me as you wish. When I was seven, I started listening to disco. I kid thee not, disco. I've always liked music with a beat that you can get up and dance to. And I liked what I was hearing. I didn't quite know how to define it at that point, but I knew I liked it. I proceeded to turn to my cousin and say, I think I have some of this music already on my computer back at home. I think I need to look into this. He told me I probably should. But I do remember looking at my music folder and I had something like, I don't know, 20, 25 initial D Eurobeat songs. That night I went through and I listened to each song I could and tried to find the artist and tried to categorize it. This is how I got into Eurobeats. Now what I found were a handful of songs that really that pulled me in. I don't know how best to describe this to you. They were the songs that... There were a handful of songs that were genuinely door openers for me when it came to the genre. What is properly called Night of Fire was kind of an introduction sample. When I was 14 and I went through all my music and did find that I had Eurobeat music, that was the point where the door really just kind of opened to me as to what was available. And I learned a little bit more over, I'd say, oh, approximately a one year period. It was slow. This is before Google fantastic SEO, guys. This is before Google could think and connect dots and do its obnoxious algorithmic analytical Google thing. So this was a tedious work to gather information on Eurobeat for me. Story time's gotta be real and raw. As I said, that one year from when I was 14 to 15, I was piecing together 
different little segments I could on what the music was. I did obtain a couple of initial D CDs so I could get more access to the music. I didn't at this point fully understand the whole alias system they had. I did figure out on my own without Google or without anybody in a Eurobeat community helping me that these were indeed aliases people were singing under and that there was a lot of crossover and there were a lot of people singing in multiple names. This kind of confused me, but again, I figured it out. So it was another door opened in the genre, if you will. When I was 15, Initial D fourth stage came out and the soundtracks came out for it. At this point, I discovered more Eurobeat and more Initial D music Eurobeat. I should phrase it as. It was around this time period that I started to connect further dots, such as Eurobeat was its own designated genre in full. That Eurobeat, though called Eurobeat and sang by Europeans, is not sold to the North American or European markets. I also started to piece together the exclusivity of it with Avex tracks and that there was indeed other English fans or other English speaking fans of the music out there. I guess to people today would be kind of a no-brainer, but at the time, sorry guys, nobody knew what this music was. I discovered a website called Eurobeat Prime. I suppose you could say the world of Eurobeat knowledge unfolded before me, at least as much as could be pieced together at the time, because people were still trying to put together aliases and singers' names and the crossover, but at least it was a group of people doing it, not just me anymore trying to figure out what all this stuff was. It was just, yeah. And there was more access to more music, and I discovered there were far more series than I initially had assumed there were. Eurobeat Prime and the discovery of this website was a major turning point for my interest in the music because it suddenly opened up a whole new door of so many more songs and so many options in the music genre. At this point, I was already enjoying a couple of artists in particular. You can never guess who they are. And seeing the complete, or at the time, what people assumed was the complete catalog of work by them was awesome in ways I cannot describe to you. Upon discovering the existence of other Eurobeat related CD series such as Euromach or Maharaja Night High Energy Revolution, I proceeded to go to eBay and I obtained a series of albums from eBay. And then going to a Japanese bookstore that was nearby and discovering they actually had a Eurobeat section and a Para Para section Imagine that! And I actually wound up for the longest time pre-ordering my Eurobeat CDs. I feel like I've covered my route to the genre pretty clearly. Now what I do want to tell you are a couple of songs, and the songs, that really brought me in fully, that made me kind of become immersed in what this music was before I even fully knew how to define the genre. Cool story, bro! About to spill some figurative tea. Let's start with the obvious. One, big nod to Back on the Rocks by Mega Energy Man. Shout out to listen. Because without that track, I probably wouldn't have had my eyebrow raised to go, what is this? This is interesting. I need to look this up further. Following in suit, next major nod goes to Get Me Power by Mega Energy Man because that song is the single most reason I fell head over heels in love with the genre. You guys, I was suckered in to get me power instantaneously. The vocals, the song, how fun it was, music, the synth hooks, everything about it was perfection. I had to get more. Next song is I Need Your Love by Dave Simon. This is a song that I feel pretty strongly. A lot of people don't kind of think twice about, but to me, I thought it was fantastic. I really enjoyed this song. One I can't go without mentioning is Blackout by Overload. Overload. Blackout by Overload remains one of the most theatrical sounding Eurobeat songs I can think of. This is something that you could have a stage show kind of circumnavigated around because there's so many sound effects, there's so much going on in it, the vocals are so expressive in my opinion. It's just, it's a really theatrical sounding song. 
and I ate it up. I loved it. The next song I need to talk about is another rather theatrical sounding song, which is One Night in Arabia by Go Go Girls. I'm sure everybody just heard me say that and they heard the chorus. This is a really over the top song by Go Go Girls. It's a lot of fun just to listen to, drive to, whatever. It's a fun song. Not the best Go Go Girls track there is, but definitely iconic for the time period. Definitely iconic for Initial D. Another song that I was obsessed with was Deja Vu by Dave Rogers. Now at this time, Space Boy was a much bigger deal than Deja Vu was. Just, it was, guys. The meme did not exist. People were not familiar with it as an internet culture thing. Space Boy was the jam. People liked Deja Vu, but Space Boy was the jam. I dug Deja Vu, and especially the New Generation remix. I could not get enough of the New Generation remix of Deja Vu. I would play that song over and over and over and over again and drive everybody I knew insane. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as fourth stage goes, one song I have to major, major, majorly nod my head to is Let's Go Come On by Manuel. When I heard this song, I was taken aback. This was on constantly for probably a good month for me. And I still, I hear this song and I just, I get happy. I don't know how better to explain it to you. I just, I feel the joy. I feel the happy. You know, don't forget that I like you. Can you feel the rhythm? Of course, there were other songs. Let's not lie to ourselves. There were many tracks I thoroughly enjoyed early on as I got into Eurobeat. But these are the ones off the top of my head without a scripted video are really outshining everything else that helped bring me into the genre, that helped me to grow, to learn more, to love this music. Something you need to understand is the music has plenty of humor in it. And there's plenty of silly songs, there's plenty of interesting lyrics, there's plenty of just it's Eurobeat. I don't know what else to say to you. All of this here is incredibly sincere for me. I'm so happy it's something I've found that I've been able to thoroughly enjoy through the years. I don't know what to say really. I'm sitting here trying to articulate a good thought to contribute to a conversation, but the fact of the matter is, I just love it. I just love it. Okay guys, so I think we're gonna wrap this up here. Because I don't have anything else I can really think of to say, and I feel like I've gotten the point across. Leave a comment down below and tell me how you found Eurobeat or how you got suckered in, pulled in to this very unique music genre. Anyway, with the end of the Super Eurobeat Everlasting Dance Tracks Super Eurobeat series as of September 2018, I feel it's important to get back to our roots and to get back to the awesomeness that is this highly unique and singular music genre. People may disagree with me in the comment that it's highly unique or highly singular, but frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> Something I'm personally constantly in awe of when it comes to Eurobeat is because of the extensive catalog due to all the labels that worked with Avex over the years. I still find songs I've not heard or I do not remember that I fall in love with. How can you complain about that? So we're gonna wrap up this video right here. But I'm very curious to hear how you first fell in love with this amazing and uniquely singular music genre. Now something I do want to note, you're listening to Eurobeat, you should be buying it from the producers and the singers and supporting the artists because they are freakishly awesome overall and I would like to see them if possible continue to make more stuff even if it's draining my wallet a little bit. Thank you for watching guys, really appreciate it, really appreciate you spending some time with me here today to discuss this music we know and love. Thank you very much for watching guys, I really appreciate your time, I really appreciate you taking that time out of your day to sit down and watch a video made by me to discuss my origins in getting into this music genre. As always, keep it classy and I'll catch ya in the next video. Bye bye. Guess what's my favorite movie? Excellent! Oh! Nailed it!